Good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining us here for our online services here at Wayne Street United Methodist Church. Uh, this has been pre-recorded and is being broadcast this morning so that you all have a, a church service to be a part of. Uh, due to some technical difficulties, we're not able to put up the live stream anymore, and I apologize for that, but we'll continue uh, posting these um, online services uh, for the foreseeable future. But <clears throat> thank you for joining us today, and as we Get started. We're going to be uh, beginning our first Sunday of Advent today. We're going to be considering uh, some of the first parts of the Christmas story and, and considering um, God's messenger Gabriel. Uh, and um, yeah, we, I got a little perspective on him that I think you might enjoy. At least I hope you do. So uh, as we begin our, our services here this morning, I'd like to take a moment and pray with you. And then uh, we're going to get right off to the sermon. So let us pray. Almighty God, here on this uh, Thanksgiving weekend, we certainly are grateful that you have uh, given us the chance to gather together. Uh, even though our, our gathering is virtual, uh, we pray, God, that you will be among us as we consider your word together. Thank you so much for your servant, Gabriel, that we are going to be reading about today and his example of, of masculinity and how important that was to Mary and how that his uh, presence built her up and gave her strength. And she was willing to trust in him, even though they only spoke for just a very brief time. Uh, we pray, God, that we will be able to uh, look at our lives and see ways that we can have a similar influence on people, whether it be uh, displaying that masculinity or showing that masculinity respect to help it to grow. Uh, either way, Lord, we just pray that uh, on both sides of the issue, we'll be able to appreciate how you have created us uh, male and female for each other. And uh, we ask, God, that you will bless us as we are considering what that means together. Uh, take a look at the role of men in the world today and consider what that may mean. Uh, we ask your blessing upon us while we consider that together. For all the many folks who are around our community who are, are sick or are in need today, Lord, we pray for all of them. Uh, we know there are a number of folks who are, are under the weather and not feeling well for a variety of reasons. God, we pray that you will bless them significantly. We also ask God for traveling mercies for a lot of people who are out, uh, you know, going out for uh, Thanksgiving uh, gathering plans and things that are out of town and they're traveling some distance to be there. We ask God your blessing upon them as, as they are going. Uh, just ask God that you'll bring them home safely uh, when their, their time of, of being away is through. We thank you for the gatherings that you have blessed over these past couple of days. And as we're now moving into the thick of the holiday season, we pray God you'll continue to bless us as we uh, have a lot of special events and things going on all around our community and, and through our families and here at church and uh, just all the ways, God, that you bless us. So we pray your presence here with us as we consider your words together. For Father, we ask all of these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, as we join our voices together and pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you all here for being with us. Uh, I'm going to switch it over to the sanctuary for the words of the sermon, and I will be back here with you in a few minutes. Hope you enjoy. This is Luke chapter 1, verses 28 to 38. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, How can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Here ends the reading. Let me give you a, a scenario here this morning. And uh, let's say, you know, prior to the service this morning, 
I was sitting up in my office getting my stuff together and, and I, I got everything in my hands now and I, and I walk out into the hallway outside my office and I smell something strange in the hallway. As I walk down the hallway toward the sanctuary, you know, the, the smell gets stronger and stronger. And as I get to the end of the hallway before I turn and go down the steps, I realize the smell is coming from the third floor. So I, instead of going right and going down to the sanctuary, I go left and up the stairs and realize as I am ascending the stairs, it's getting warmer the higher I go. And there's also a significant amount of smoke in the hallway. I get to the top of the stairs and I realize the third floor is completely engulfed in flames. So there's this raging fire on the third floor and all of you good people who are gathered here for worship, you're in danger because of the fire. So I, I turn to come back downstairs and I realize at that moment someone has followed me up to the third floor. Behind me stands my man, Roman Poff, that adorable little guy that he is. What should I do at this point? I'm going to give you two scenarios. Which one do you think I should do? First one. I grab Roman, I run directly down the stairs to the sanctuary, and I tell all of you to evacuate the building immediately. Do I do that? Or do I do B? Do I tell Roman, you go directly to the sanctuary and tell all those people to evacuate? Which one should I do? I mean, why shouldn't I send Roman, right? I mean, he's adorable. People would listen to him. In fact, sometimes I think I, I, I should have him up here to do the sermon some Sundays because he would command a lot more attention than I do, even though he's two. Honestly, <laughs> if I sent Roman down here to tell you that, I'd probably end up getting arrested for that because that's not being responsible because it's not his job to warn you about the fire. It's mine. Now, the point I'm making here with this ridiculous example is important messages need a messenger that's up to the task. Roman may be adorable, but he's not the one that you want to trust with a life or death warning. Important messages need the right messenger. Now, what if the message you want to send is to a young woman who is about to become the mother of God? Who do you trust to deliver that message? Well, according to Luke chapter 1, you trust the archangel Gabriel. And let's take a moment to give you some of Gabriel's qualifications to be ready for such a task. Now, while I'm sure that Gabriel was present in many biblical scenes, or pretty much any biblical scene where angels were mentioned, he's only named in two stories. Obviously, he's named in this one. He's the angel that came to speak to Mary in the passage we read here just a moment ago. But he also shows up once in the Old Testament. He is the angel that came to speak to Daniel. Now, Daniel is a prophet from the Old Testament. He lived about 600 years before the birth of Jesus. So when Gabriel shows up in Luke chapter 1, he is at least 600 years old. There's every reason to think that he's much older, but we know he's at least that old. So he shows, when Gabriel shows up to speak to Daniel, he's recorded in Dan, the book of Daniel, chapters 8 and 9. Now, in those chapters, Daniel has just had a dream. About, and he had a dream about the end of the world. And he's very upset about this. He had a dream that there was a ram and a goat who were fighting each other. And he's very worked up about this. When he wakes up, God sends Gabriel to help him make sense of the vision he just had. God wanted to help clarify what Daniel experienced. And with a message that important, God sent a qualified messenger. He, in that situation, much like this one, sends the archangel Gabriel. Now, since we don't know much else about Gabriel except for his name... Let me take just a moment to explain what his name means. Gabriel is a Hebrew name that means man of God. But man doesn't mean human. You know, it doesn't mean man like I am. In this particular case, it means masculine. Now, there was a day and age when masculinity was a good thing. You know, men were the defenders, the leaders, the strength, the backbone of the family. If somebody threatened the family, dad was the one expected to turn away the threat by any means necessary. Masculinity used to make people under the man's care feel safe. And there was a time that both men and women and children all appreciated that. Now, Gabriel's name, that's the kind of masculinity we're talking about. The kind that provides and protects. It is in this way that he, his name means the man of God. This kind of masculinity is on full display when he speaks to Mary. 
In a culture where women were not used to having men they were not related to even speak to them or even acknowledge them, look what Gabriel says. He says, greetings, favored woman. Okay, I'm going to level with you here. I don't think this kind of greeting is going to catch on. I mean, maybe we could spend the rest of the morning today using that greeting. Maybe I could come up to you after church and say, greetings, favored parishioner. I, you know, I, I don't know if that's going to catch on. But friends, this is a term of endearment. And you know, unless you're being obnoxious, you, know, you wouldn't use this greeting to greet just anyone. This is what you say to somebody who matters to you. This is how you greet your daughter. This is how you greet your sister. This is a tender thing to say to someone. Yes, masculine man Gabriel speaks to Mary tenderly. Contrary to popular belief, that's how masculinity works. This isn't sexual, this isn't mean, it's not gruff, but it is very powerful. And we're told that Mary, it says, she wonders what kind of greeting this is. And the reason she wonders what kind of greeting this is is because most women never get greeted like that by any man in their lives. It takes a real man to speak this way, and that's what Gabriel does. Again, there's nothing sexual here. This is just a man revealing his strength to a woman for no other reason than he is present. And I can tell you that Mary feels very safe with Gabriel because she asks him a question during their conversation. This isn't Gabriel dictating to her what will happen. This is Gabriel talking with a young woman and she knows that he has authority and she yields to that authority, but she also knows he's not a threat. Not only that, he conveys so much strength that she feels comfortable asking him a question. When she asks her question, she believes he's going to be able to answer it. And he's not going to be intimidated or threatened by her questioning him. He's not going to be bothered by that. He wants to be clear. She wants him to be clear. And that's fine. That's how a man does things. And it's no question why God sent this particular angel to deliver this most important of messages. God chose Gabriel for a reason. And it is his presence that God wanted to use. In this angel's present presence, Mary knows no threat. So Gabriel tells Mary, you're going to have a son. And Mary's like, I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, there's a biological reason why that's going to be a problem. And the angel tells Mary, this particular child will be the son of God. The promised Messiah will be the son that she will have. And Gabriel then goes on to tell her that her aunt Elizabeth is already pregnant with a son of her own. So Gabriel announces that one woman, Elizabeth, who is too old to have a child... Another woman who's too young because she's not married to have a child are both having children. And Mary, who appears to be aware of her Aunt Elizabeth's pregnancy, realizes Gabriel's for real about this. Again, this is what masculinity is able to do. This angel is not speaking of things that he does not understand. You know, he doesn't have to talk a good game to manipulate Mary. When it's the truth, you don't need any of that stuff. Mary feels the strength of this man of God. She trusts him. Something else that true masculinity is able to do. And then in her final sentence, Mary proves why God chose her and she confirms herself why Gabriel was the one sent to deliver the message. Mary chooses her words very carefully and she says quite a lot in a, in a very few words. She says, I am the Lord's servant. Obviously God knew this young woman's great faith. And he knew that this woman would make a wonderful mother for his son. You know, pretty obvious, that's why Mary was chosen. But the second half of her statement also says quite a lot. She says, may everything you've said about me come true. That's a profound statement. And that she is expressing faith and confidence in Gabriel. She trusts this man of God and believes that what he has told her is true. And he is worthy of her confidence. And this whole scenario is worthy of her belief. Now, how long does this interaction take? Two minutes at the most? And in this very short amount of time, Gabriel is able to bring Mary from a place of confusion and fear to a place of faith and confidence. And that is what true masculinity can do. Now, there's not a big show here. There's not a bunch of talk. There is any intimidation of this poor young woman. There is one man of God, and he allowed his presence to do the talking. He inspired confidence in Mary in a very short amount of time. Now think about how important Gabriel's job was. 
I mean, he was literally setting the stage for the arrival of the Messiah. He was instilling in Mary the kind of faith she was going to need to be able to endure public ridicule of having a baby out of wedlock. She was going to be rejected by her family. That's why eventually she's going to be with Joseph on her way to Bethlehem for the census. Joseph was all Mary was going to have left because her family disowns her. She's going to have this baby in the barn because the world had no room for them. Gabriel had to set all this in motion with a very, very brief conversation. Now, as hindsight always is, it's 2020, we know that Gabriel was successful because all these things worked out to give us the Jesus that we are all so thankful for today. So it's no big surprise that Gabriel was successful, and it's pretty obvious why he was the one chosen to deliver this most important of messages. Okay? So we get that. But let's take a moment to give some kudos to Mary. She was the one who had to be willing to respond to this man of God. She had to allow him to speak to her. She had to be open to draw stability and confidence from his presence. She had to be willing to allow this man of God, who I remind you was a stranger to her, the chance to affect her with his masculinity, just his presence. She had to recognize the goodness that was in him and be able to listen to what he had to say. I mean, Gabriel could have been the manliest man ever. But if Mary shuts herself down to his strength, his message would have been lost. Now, I will admit, this is probably the first sermon in the history of the world that has ever been preached on masculinity as a part of the Christmas story. But as I worked on the sermon this week, this is the lesson I kept coming back to for this morning. The only reason that this interaction between the angel and this young woman worked is because two things are true. First, the angel projected true masculinity. Second, Mary recognized that masculinity as a good thing. I'm afraid today that our world does neither of these things well. Masculinity has been demonized, and on the rare occasion that somebody does have true masculinity, no one knows how to respond to it. That's the lesson I now take from this brief interaction between Gabriel and Mary. It tells me just how important men being men, men being masculine is. The world needs men. Men need men. Women need men. Children really need men. And because when the chips are down and something needs to be done, that's when men are at their best. It's the quiet confidence that can see families through so many situations. And I know, right now, a bunch of you ladies are laughing on the inside. You know, you're laughing on the inside because you're trying to imagine the men that you know in your life attempting to do what I'm saying here this morning. And it seems funny. And it's true. Being a man has <clears throat> nothing to do with age or anatomy. <clears throat> Masculinity is something that must be developed over time. That's part of it. However, masculinity is powerful, but it is not forceful. It doesn't throw tantrums. It doesn't lose control. It doesn't try to intimidate. It doesn't use violence. When men resort to these things, we are not using the kind of masculinity that Gabriel demonstrates in this passage. We're falling short of the standard, as we all do. However, Mary also has a responsibility here. I mean, I know this seems weird to think about, but she could have shut Gabriel down by not listening to him, or being disrespectful toward him, or not paying attention to him, or, or giving him the respect he deserves. If she cancels his masculinity by not allowing it to affect her, then she would not have been a beneficiary of what Gabriel had to offer. God had something very, very important to say through Gabriel. And there was a reason why Gabriel was chosen to deliver this message. He was the right man for the job. But that's only half of what happened. The other half is that Mary was encouraged and supported by Gabriel's presence. And that's only because she allowed herself to be fed by his strength. Gabriel was over 600 years old at this time. He had fought battles. He has won victories. He had vanquished demons and he had rescued people. But this particular assignment from God did not require his fighting skills. It required his quiet strength. And that quiet strength, the very same strength that God Gabriel chosen for this particular assignment, that quiet strength would have done nothing for Mary if she would not have respected what Gabriel had to offer. So I say this to all of you men and women 
and children out there today, masculinity will do nothing for you. I mean, even if you had the world's greatest example of masculinity in your life, be it your father, you know, your husband, your brother, somebody, if you have the perfect example in your life, that masculinity won't do anything for you if you don't show it any respect. Because again, masculinity is powerful, but it is not forceful. Listen and to the wisdom. Draw from its strength. Because if you ignore it and don't allow it to flourish and pay no attention to it, then it's not surprising that you're not reaping the benefit of the men that you have in your lives. Again, this is true for women, and it is true for children, but it's also true for other men. We all need some measure of true masculinity in our lives. The only way that works is if we show the respect to the men who actually possess it. God had a very important message to deliver to Mary. She needed to understand what it was she had been chosen for. Now, under normal circumstances, a 600-year-old warrior does not seem like someone you choose to go make a baby announcement. But Gabriel possessed the one quality that Mary desperately needed to experience in that moment. She needed the quiet strength of masculinity. Not a lot of fuss and messing around. Just the reassurance and confidence that this young woman needed. True masculinity is respectful, uplifting, protecting, and strong. And if that wasn't the case, God would have sent someone else to deliver this message. This seems like the kind of thing God would have sent a female angel to go talk to her about it so she could relate to her. I mean, what does Gabriel, he may know a lot of stuff about a lot of things. What does he know about babies, right? He's never been there, but that's not who God chose. And God didn't make that choice for a reason. So the first part of the story of the first Christmas, the part that set the whole thing in motion, was delivered by a 600-year-old warrior who projected enough masculine strength that even a frightened young woman felt safe in his presence. Kind of begs the question, and it makes me wonder, how many other positive messages could be sent if masculinity was displayed and respected like that today? How much more could we learn? How much more could we benefit from that if we would do those two things? And my friends, masculinity, it's very important to possess, and it's very important to experience. And may you do so, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you for joining me here this morning uh, for this uh, live stream of our worship services. Uh, we pray that you've had a blessed uh, Thanksgiving season, and as we're now beginning the journey toward Christmas, that uh, we'll be able to consider pieces of the Christmas story together and realize what a blessing uh, the birth of Christ is. So thank you for being here. I'm going to throw it back to the sanctuary, and we're going to conclude this morning with the words of the benediction. Contrary to popular belief, masculinity in its true form is a very good thing. May you appreciate it for what it is. In Jesus' name, amen.